Hi and welcome and in this short video I'm going to talk about how to reduce weight loss diet friction for proven steps. Uh, my name is Eric Simpson, I am an online weight loss coach, a creator of the Coach Me Slim and Trim program, a program designed to help busy professional women who want to drop at least two to three dress sizes within a 90 day period and more if they go beyond uh, without counting calories, spending hours exercising every day or trying to be 100% perfect. And there's just a, a quick slide showing some of the ladies I've worked with over my time in this profession. So today's topic then, what is it? It's about how do we go about reducing the friction when it comes to weight loss? Now, weight loss, I'm sure you agree, is a very emotional thing. You know, it's not a case of just the academics of eat less or eat more healthily and exercise and everything will be wonderful. You have to deal with a lot of moving parts. And I'm going to go through some of those moving parts today and again, share with you these four proven steps that can help you to hopefully reduce the friction around the dieting element of uh, losing weight. There are other elements as well, which I'll talk about, but today's focus will be primarily around reducing the friction around diet. Now, there is a bit of a backdrop to this presentation in terms of how we as human beings, you know, use our minds. And if you drive a vehicle, you've probably experienced what I'm going to describe now, maybe on more than one occasion. And that is, it's quite possible that you've taken a journey from point A to point B, gone through a set of traffic lights, gone over a roundabout, gone over a zebra crossing, arrived at your destination and can't really recall the journey you've just taken. In fact, it's kind of frightening when that happens to you. And if that's happened to you, basically you've got from A to B almost on automatic pilot. And when you think about the complexity of driving a vehicle, the things that are required, the visual awareness of where you are at any given point, you know, changing gears, taking the right turnings, you know, there's quite a few moving parts to that. When you consider you can make that journey and arrive there and not realize what you've done, it gives you some indication as to how it's possible then for us as human beings to have other things that we do in our lives that just happen automatically. And there is a school of thought that we spend and can operate 80% of our daily lives pretty much on automatic pilot, almost like we're doing it in a sleepwalk, as the picture uh, demonstrates there. Problem with that is some of those habits, those automatic habits, we need to do because they keep us alive and they keep us safe. But some of those automatic habits don't. And those are the habits that can lead us into having unhealthy bodies, unhealthy lifestyles, carrying excess weight, and all the other things related to unhealthy habits. So just recognize that we can and we do lead our lives 80% of it on automatic pilot. So we have to be aware of that and we have to be prepared to work with that. And really that's what I'll be doing today is talking about how we can work with our natural propensity to do things on automatic pilot. Because let's be honest, if we couldn't carry out certain functions on automatic pilot or relatively automatically, we would have died out as a species a long time ago. And living in the Western society now, there's lots of things we can do on automatic pilot that don't require us to give it the full attention. Because if it did, if we had to always relearn how to drive the car because we hadn't got that into our subconscious sort of memory bank, could you imagine waking up every morning and going out to your car and thinking, how do I do this again? It just wouldn't be a good thing. So doing things on automatic pilot, learning certain skills is a good thing. Question is, what are the habits that you've actually learnt? Uh, and I'm going to be using and referencing a chap called uh, James Clear as I go through this presentation. He's the author of a book called Atomic Habits. So I'm going to be adapting some of his thinking to the way in which I approach weight loss myself with my clients. So before we get started, I just want you to imagine a rather crazy situation just to kind of make the point about the friction that there can be around trying to lose weight. So just imagine this for a second. I ask you to go and brush your teeth, but in order to do that, you've got to walk out of your back door of your house, you've got to walk down a 50 yard garden path, you've got to walk to a garden shed, you've got to unlock the padlock, go into the shed, there's a trunk in there, you've got to unlock the trunk, You've got to go into the trunk, pull out a box, unlock the box, take out your toothbrush and toothpaste, lock everything back up, go into the house, up the stairs, and brush your teeth and take it all the way back down again, lock everything else up. Let me ask a question. 
what state would your teeth be in right now if you had to do that every single day? <laughs> the chances are you'd have no teeth or very poor teeth at best because why? There's so much friction there and weight loss can feel like that sometimes and I say feel like that because we're going to be discussing that and when it feels like that, when there's that much friction uh, to it, guess what? You're not going to do it. So we need to work out how do we make it less of a friction, how do we make it smoother for ourselves? And I say I'll be sharing with you four proven steps I've been using now for well over a decade uh, with the clients I've been working with. So let's just remind ourselves of where the friction occurs when it comes to weight loss. As I said, today I'm going to focus primarily on uh, nutrition, but the three areas where there's friction, typically there's friction around the way we think in terms of our emotions, there can be friction there. Uh, there can be friction around the way we eat. Uh, in terms of the nutrition, you know, because we could all eat, you know, eating ice cream versus eating a nice healthy salad. It's both eating, but one's got nutritional value, the other one hasn't. So what is it that makes the friction around the nutrition, uh, around eating that nutritionist meal versus eating the ice cream? We're going to talk about it. Uh, moving, moving your body, you know, getting out of bed in the morning and going down and sitting down and having croissant and cake, or not cake, but coffee and watching TV. That is movement, but the friction's around doing specific exercises you know how do you minimize that well the principles i'll be sharing with you today are applicable for the way we think in terms of reducing friction and in terms of exercise as well so let's just remind ourselves of a, a common situation that you might find yourself in when it comes to weight loss and trying to eat healthily so at some point if you've tried losing weight and i'm guessing you have that's why you're on this channel the boredom factor creeps in. Look, I know what it's like, I've been there as well, the boredom factor creeps in. And when you feel bored about something, that becomes, according to James Clear, that is the cue. So the boredom is the cue. Okay, now I've been given the cue because I feel bored, I need some sort of entertainment to get over that boredom. So what do we do? We have a craving, or how do we feel? We have a craving. What do we crave typically? we tend to crave um, foods that are not particularly healthy. So the response is to go and eat junk food. So you go and have that junk food or drink that alcohol. What's the reward? You get a moment's worth of distraction. And that's basically the chain of events that people go through uh, when they start to um, you know, damage their health and gain weight. I've done it to myself, my clients have done it, but there is a way around this. And I say I'll be sharing those four steps with you in a little while. Now. Here's the big mistake I see a lot of people make when they want to try and lose weight. They recognize that they're doing this, maybe not quite in this sort of order, maybe they haven't labeled it like cue, craving, junk food, or maybe they have the junk food, uh, distraction, but fundamentally this is what they're doing. And here's the mistake I see people making. They try and do something rather dramatic. They try and take some big massive steps, right, that's it, I'm gonna completely overhaul my diet, I'm going to join the gym, uh, I'm going to do an online workout with whoever, I'm going to really commit to this big time for the next fill in the blank, six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is. So they're going to take some massive action, some massive steps. Now, for most people, that's a bit of a challenge, psychologically. Intellectually, it makes sense, but psychologically, emotionally, to make those big steps and sustain them and stick with it and make it a lifestyle, very, very difficult. Not many people will stay the course with that. So my advice to people is always to take small steps in order to get big gains. Now I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by this, and it's maybe not the best example in the world, but hopefully you'll get the point. We were out doing a test drive, me and my wife, a few days ago, and we were in a nice sort of high-end uh, car, and the handbrake uh, you know, when I go back to when I learned how to drive back in the 80s, it was, you know, reach down with your left hand and pull the handbrake on. And back then it was a bit of a muscle man thing to pull the handbrake on. This car we were in, quite literally, you just, your finger, and you just flicked a switch, and that was the handbrake on. So, going from pulling it on with your arm, some real muscle strength, to using your little pinky and pulling this lever, and the handbrake's on. So what's happening behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, you've got a lot of electrical components carrying out certain actions, linked to some mechanical things, 
carrying out some actions, but each action is quite small, but it's incremental, and it leads to a big end result. And the big end result is you could be parked on a hill, 30% incline, in a two-ton vehicle, flick your little finger, the handbrake goes on, and it holds the vehicle in that position. That's quite a big thing that's just happened, but with a little effort of your little finger. The alternative to that would be, rather than having a handbrake or your little, pink, your little pinky to put the handbrake on, you'd have to stop your car, jump out, stand in front of the car, and actually hold it on this 30 degree incline hill and stop it from rolling down. Now, you may be able to hold the car for a few minutes, possibly, depends how strong you are, but eventually, your arm's gonna give way. It's just too much, it's coming at you. The, the, the pressure is relentless. The, the, the weight of the vehicle coming forwards, you just can't hold it there too long. And that's what tends to happen with people when they take too big a step. There's too much that they're pushing back against when it comes to taking these huge, gigantic steps. So you're better off taking the small steps and building them into a lifestyle. Now, I just wanna give you a quick example of how this played out in a different arena from weight loss before I go into what these four steps are that you can take to reduce the friction when it comes to the dieting aspect, the health eating aspect of weight loss. An example I'd like to use is of a, uh, a famous coach, you may have heard of him, his name's Sir David John Brailsford. So this coach, he went to Team GB uh, cycling team. And when he went there, Team GB cycling team were not particularly good uh, on the world stage in terms of winning world championships or winning gold medals. You know, we were like pretty mediocre at best. Well, he went in and like any good coach, he, he looked at their training regime, he, he looked at their nutrition, he'd have looked at their sleeping habits, that sort of thing. So he'd have looked at that like most coaches would do that. But he took it a stage further and he started looking at the, the, the gear they were, the training gear, he looked at that. Uh, he looked at not only their sleeping patterns, but he looked at the beds they were sleeping in. And then he brought in somebody, I think it was a professor he brought in, to teach the team members how to wash their hands. And at the time of this recording, it seems quite pertinent, but the rationale being to reduce uh, the risk of spreading viruses, bacteria, whatever. And his thinking was, if we can reduce the spread of virus, bacteria, <clears throat> and you're becoming ill, it means that instead of you being ill or under the weather, those days that we would have lost through ill health, we can now use those days either for training or we can use them for good quality recovery. So he brought about all of these little changes and at the start of his tenure as a coach, I think he gave himself five years to bring home, I think it was the Tour de France, and please forgive me if I've got my exact stats wrong with what we did and didn't win, but basically he gave himself about a five year period to bring home, I think it was Tour de France. Well, I believe he achieved it within three years. And then at the 2012 Olympic Games, <clears throat> GB hadn't been a big player on the Olympic stage. I think my facts are correct in saying Team GB brought home something like 70% of the available medals at the 2012 Olympic Games. Phenomenal effort. And this chap, Sir David John Brailsford, I think he coined the phrase marginal gains. And really that's what we're talking about. We're talking about baby steps, these baby steps. What we're speaking about is small, incremental, marginal gains. You know, small little actions, but done consistently over a period of time are what's going to build up habits. And when you build up those habits, guess what? Everything becomes far easier. Not easy, but easier. So that's uh, the coach. That's the example. Let's now dive into then what these four things are that you can do to reduce um, the friction when it comes to weight loss, specifically dieting.